What's up? I'm coming to you, anonymous, to talk about the money hungry slum lords, Alamo How, who just pick on the people. No, I'm just playing. I'm coming to you direct. Shades Vision, you feel me? I'm here. We have a discussion, a real one, issues a lot of people have with the slum lords, Alamo How. Well, I've had my own experience. With a slumlord in Lama, Ohio. Shawnee Properties. And I've had several people since exposing years ago my situation with them come into me and tell me, hey, I had similar situations with them. And then it's a lot more than you expect. All right. Number one. I, per I went up to Shawnee Properties and I need somewhere to rent. Check it. So I go to Ada, Ohio. And they had a little property there through the Lime Ohio ones, right? Sent me to 8 Ohio. They had this property there. I went there. I go in. Within a week, my power is completely out. Completely out. Doesn't come back on. Whatever. That day, I had just spent three, four, five hundred dollars Like, you know what I mean? A lot of money. We were filling our fridge up with groceries. We just moved in. We wanted our fridge to be full. Whatever. We spent a lot of money. Power went out. So I called Shawnee Properties and I'm like, hey, you know, the power's out, what's going on? Da, da, da. They're like, well, the city of Ada's all power, power went out, yada, yada, yada. So they try to blame it on the city. Well, the city, I'm driving through the city, everybody has power's back on. The next day, so I'm calling up there, hey, my power's out, nothing's going on, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So they have an inspector come up there or like one of their uh, maintenance guys come up there and be like, all right, look, check it. You know, there's a fire hazard or whatever. We can't, we can't turn your power back on because there's a fire hazard because the building is outdated 20 plus years and they have to wait to get an inspector out there so they told me my power is going to be out for a week i'm gonna be a week without power i was like wow just moved in here this is why i'm going through a week without power cool so of course all the food in my fridge gets spoiled everything goes bad there was nothing i can do about it you know so a week goes by and I'm trying to get some answers like, hey, power's not on. Where's the inspector? They'll be out there soon. We just have to get the city to go out there. And they might, you know, might we never know. We just gotta wait. Yada yada yada. I'm like, all right, whatever. Meanwhile, I can't I don't have Wi-Fi. I don't have power. I don't have anything. I'm in a dark house. And granted, it's the middle of the summer. So I'm on going on two weeks. And I call him, they'll call him. I'm like, hey, what's going on? I can't sleep. It's hot. I don't need to be living in these conditions. What's going on? And meanwhile, they still are expecting me to pay rent. Month goes by. Still hasn't been fixed. Still waiting on the inspector. They should be out there anytime now. And at this point, I'm getting frustrated. It's been a month. You've told me the same thing every single day. What's going on? So then they finally get a guy from a city to come out and he, and he says the same thing. He's been outdated and needs to get worked on yada, yada. At this point, <clears throat> we're going on a month and a half and I'm telling Shawnee properties, Hey, look, y'all going to have to put me somewhere else. Y'all going to put me somewhere else, whatever, temporarily until y'all fix this issue because I have to be on Wi-Fi. I have to have my power. I have to have, I have to be able to have food in my house that isn't going to spoil. I'm tired of fast food because that's what we've been forced to eat because we ain't got no power. We can't have cold drinks in the house. Can't have cold food. Can't have milk. Can't have cereal. Can't have nothing because of this. So, you know, I told him like, I'm not going to pay rent because you're not giving me, you're not giving me like, this is not living conditions. You're not fixing it. I'm on a month and a half pushing on two months. And they say, all right, well, the apartment next door has power. You can go there temporarily until we fix this issue. I'm like, cool. But, you know, I'm not allowed to put Wi-Fi over. I can't. They told me I can't switch the Wi-Fi and stuff over there because, you know, you're just going to end up coming back to this apartment anyways, you know, here soon. So, you know, at least you'll have power and all that. And I was like, cool. I go over to the next apartment and it is infested with roaches like completely infested they did not clean this apartment at all like nothing there was clean nothing there was good or whatever and then the fridge doesn't work the fridge didn't work at all 
So I get, went over there and got power, but I had a fridge that didn't work. And it was infested with roaches. So I didn't even want to put my stuff in the house. So I kept most of my stuff in my vehicle to keep it from being infested with roaches. Anyways, that was supposed to be a temporary thing. Three months down the line, and then they didn't come and fix the fridge. They haven't done any of this stuff. Um, that you know, we we cleaned up the the roach fest infestation, but you know, it's still really hard. You know, with all the like stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's it's hard to completely get rid of it. You have to do it a lot over time. You know, um, so we're still dealing with that situation. And next thing you know, they fixed the house over there. So we go up to Shawnee property. And it's like okay, so y'all fix it over there. We ready to go over there? No, they signed a new tenant to our place that has our name on it. And they did. They put us in this place completely like this is our place. This new place now is completely our place without communicating with us, without telling us anything, because we wanted that place back because where we at was just nasty. Nothing was working. And they still hadn't come out to fix the fridge that I kept asking them to come out and fix. Like you put me in this apartment and none of the none of the supplies, the none of it works. Nobody wants to use the oven with all them roaches. Like I'm telling you, this place was disgusting. It was dirty. Like it had not been clean. And, um, anyway, so they gave this apartment, which is completely next door. We could go through the walls. You know what I'm saying? They gave it to this guy who, by the way, was loud, extremely, extremely loud. So we was already irritated. Our apartment got given up to somebody else. But not only that, within a couple days, the power on this side, where we had moved to went out and we lost everything. And that went on for a month. And they said, we got to fix this. And we got to fix that. And yada, yada, yada. So it was just like this whole apartment building was outdated. Meanwhile, I'm still paying rent. So six months, seven, eight months. I can't get the exact number. It was around October. We were like, you know what? We're going to leave. We're going to leave because... I can't keep dragging on in these conditions where the power's out. You know, since we moved in, we hadn't been able to keep food in a fridge. But for one week of six months, six, seven, eight months of living there. So we ultimately came up with the decision we're going to move to North Carolina because that was the plan anyways, was just live here until we got enough funds to go to North Carolina. Um, anyways, we're like, screw it. We're going to leave because we literally lived Almost all this time, paying all this rent, giving them all this money, and they didn't fix none of these issues. And they moved me to fix an issue to give it to somebody, uh, to give the place to somebody else just when this new apartment building has issues. So we were just done with them, and we we kept begging them, hey, come fix this, Rich. Hey, come fix this. And they wouldn't do it. They didn't do none of the stuff that we asked. And they kept on calling me about rent. And I would pay early so they'd forget. They'd be paid. And I'm like, I'm paying y'all early and y'all can't even get this stuff done on time. Anyways, we leave. We go to North Carolina. And I get a letter in the mail saying I have to pay $3,000 to them for their maids coming in and cleaning. And they took pictures or whatnot of this, of like the air conditioning unit in the back room, room that we didn't even use because we didn't even bring stuff in there because of the roach inf infestation. We moved into that second apartment, nasty. We didn't get nothing about the first apartment we lived in that was clean when we moved in because we left it as it was clean. But we moved into a dirty apartment that was already mad, disgusting, cleaned it ourselves. But we're not going to, we're not, we're not doing all this for, you know, extra for a company that isn't even giving us power. Doesn't even get us a reliable fridge. This was not a good living condition at all. So basically they sent us a letter saying we owe like three bands for, for cleaning something that we didn't even make a mess in the first time. When I called the lady and told her, I was like, look, bro, I'm not paying this. Because you and I know you moved me to this apartment. And when you moved me to this apartment, you said it is not the cleanest, but at least it has power. So you acknowledged that you put me in a disgusting, disgusting house. So I could at least have power and air conditioning in the middle of a hot summer. And then turn around and try to charge me for the mess that y'all had in the house. 
We was really clean. And they know that because they was able to move somebody into the apartment right next door to us without a cleaning crew because we left it clean. But you know what? They, they hit us with the 3,000. They threatened court. I cussed her. I cussed her out on the phone. I let her have it. At this point, I was already here. And they be, better be glad that I wasn't still in Ohio. Because I was, I was lit the way she was talking to me, the disrespect. You know what I mean? It was just wild. Like, they were telling me, like, I'm going to need to pay. Or I'm going to go to court. You let the house disgusting. Our people had to go in there. And we had to spend thousands of dollars on this. And I'm like, you did not spend thousands of dollars to clean, for one. Nobody's charging you guys thousands of dollars to clean because any person could go in there and clean whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? We spent money to clean the house. That was dirty when we walked in. Like, we got screwed several times where they were moving us around to even worse conditions because they didn't take responsibility and get their stuff fixed. Meanwhile, they're, they're, they're expecting the rent for these unlivable conditions without power. They want, they want people to pay for some cleaning service that is not paying, is not charging them bands to clean for one. And they ain't charging that much. And they expect, they expect us to pay that when the mess won't even from us. You acknowledge you moved us into this disgusting house. Anyways, I've heard similar stories from, from tenants in Lima, Ohio that rented in Lima where they left with fees of thousands of dollars for cleaning when there was nothing to clean. They, they said to, and this, I'm going to leave this person anonymous that, that the left note that they, that all they didn't do was sweep in the crevices of a fridge and they got hit with a thousand dollar fee for cleaning. I'm just disgusted. Like, how does that thousands of dollars to clean? Like, there's so many local people that do cleaning services that aren't that aren't even charging for this little stuff. They're charging. They might not even charge on it bucks because it's it's nothing. This stuff is nothing. So when they hit me with that charge, I was just like, wow. Like the slum, they're slum lords. The whole time I lived there, they didn't fix the issue until I left, until they moved me to another apartment. Then they fixed the issue because they saw they could make more money by renting my apartment out to somebody else and leave us in a disgusting one that they refused to fix. Because at this point, we're still staying there. And, and if we break the lease, then they can hit us with the fees. Because on top of the thousands of dollars, they tried to charge us fees to, to sweep up a little bit. Okay. They wanted to charge us for leaving early. Can I charge y'all for not getting your stuff done, Shawnee property? Can I charge y'all for the months on end that I had food rotting? For the months on end that I couldn't get no air conditioning? For the months on end I couldn't get on the internet? That I couldn't do anything in my house? That I was, I was paying utilities to the utility company. I was paying internet bills to the internet company for stuff that I didn't have. Because you know how Time Warner works. I mean, Spectrum now. And you pay them. And when you put on hold or you stop, you get charged still. So I was getting charged for the months. I wasn't getting Wi-Fi or, or anything. Just so when I got it back, it wouldn't be extremely high again. If anything, I should be charging y'all for not taking care of your tenants. I should file a lawsuit against y'all. I got threatened to go to court, y'all. I should be threatening y'all to go to court for the unstable living conditions that I had to deal with during those years. Now, this is two years ago. And since then, I have seen on my Facebook several people making the same complaints. And a lot of people that didn't have to deal with the, the BS from Shawnee Properties... They would, they would probably think all oh, these people were just bad tenants and complaining. I thought that too when I rented out from Shawnee Properties. And then within a week, I learned how valid these complaints were. Shawnee Properties is nothing but a bunch of slumlords. And I remember at the same time, I was dealing with my mess with Shawnee Properties. I tell you, I went months without power in the middle of summer. It was hot. Okay, while I was dealing with all that, I heard complaints from my friends talking about, well, I'm in Shawnee Properties and we just went weeks without water running. And the same thing, outdated systems. They got to get somebody out there to fix it. Okay, 
But here's my thing. If you if you have so many issues that you can't get nobody out there to fix it and you don't have enough places to put people that are paying you money that is re uh, reliable, it's not going to be worse than the place it just came from. If you ain't got that, then don't be expecting people to pay you rent for that time. These issues need you to fix. I'm mad that I sent you guys so much of my money, but I had put so much money down on y'all that I didn't have enough to just go to another apartment. Plus, it's taking a big loss. I believed you when you told me it'll get done soon. Soon does not go over months time. Oh, you'll be there in the next couple days. I don't know how many times they told me the guy was going to come out there and talk to me and, and, and assess the situation and how many months it took to actually see a person. This guy did not do his job. The, the people in the office just procrastinated. They didn't care. They didn't care about the living conditions. The only thing they could think about is money. Because why would they move somebody else into the apartment my name was under while I was waiting for them to fix it? They fix it and immediately move somebody over there when it's my turn to go back over there. They were efficient when it came to getting their money. But they weren't efficient with doing the job they get their money from. And that's my grievance with Shawnee Properties and a lot of people's grievance with Shawnee Properties because they're so money hungry that they will literally beat down the poor, the average, the regular people. When they're getting so much money, you're getting so much money and you can't even do the job. You just sit in an office and make excuses. Oh, you know, the examiners and oh, this and that. And I'm like, bro. Outside of the work that needs done, which wasn't a lot. When they finally came out and did that house, they had it all done in a day. In a day. And this is pre-COVID. Everybody was working. This ain't during COVID. This is pre-COVID. They had the workers. They just didn't care. Because they was going to have to spend money on it. And they wanted to line somebody else to make put into our apartment to make more money. The massive disrespect is insane. The amount of money I lost is insane because I was still an influencer. I was making rap lists and stuff. And I had to go to McDonald's to download videos, put them together, and upload on the slow McDonald's Wi-Fi, I might add, to continue to do my stuff. So I was less efficient because I had to travel to get the Wi-Fi. I was less efficient because I was sweating in my sleep in the middle of summer without air conditioning. I was less efficient because I had to go get fast food every single day. I wasn't getting my nice home-cooked meals like I was getting. Because I can't have none of that in the house. There was nothing working. This is the conditions I was forced to live in with Shawnee Properties. And I was paying dang sure enough to take care of these issues. But that's Shawnee Properties. And this is my warning. If you want to go and rent through someone, don't do Shawnee properties. They do not take care of their tenants. They do not take care of their responsibilities. They are awful. They are awful. And that's all I'm going to say. And I post this, even though this has been two years ago, I post this as a warning to people who need a place to stay because Shawnee properties is one of the biggest property owners in Lima, Ohio. I post this as a warning so you know and expect what to deal with if you are thinking about going into Shawnee properties. But if anything, I'd encourage you to find somewhere else, to, to, to get property somewhere else because a lot of these people really just don't care. And this is my experiences with them. This is several people's experiences with them. People, if you uh, look up Shawnee Properties on Facebook, you will see nothing, <clears throat> nothing but complaints and the stuff they've done. And I promise you, 99% of these complaints are completely valid because I went through it and several people have went through it and it doesn't matter how much you talk to them how much you blow them up how much you try to be kind about it how much how respectful you are about it they will screw you in the end and then outside of taking responsibility for their actions they'll threaten to take you to court for a mess you didn't create They'll threaten, they'll, it doesn't matter. I swear, if you let that place completely spotless when you leave there, 
they're going to find some charge because that's what Shawnee Properties does. That's exactly what they do. They are horrible landlords. They are a horrible company. And this is that's this is my warning. Do not buy from the slumlords of Shawnee Properties. Do not rent from the slumlords of Shawnee Properties. Steer clear. They do not take care of their tenants. Good day, y'all.